on the wild side. Like Milo Pai, some people work to preserve our natural resources through science. Others, like Charles Brindley, look to preserve our history through their art. He's been working behind the scenes at the Tennessee Land Trust, capturing his surroundings on canvas. You wouldn't expect to find this just four miles from downtown Nashville. An actual farm. Cows, farms, gardens, a honeybee sanctuary, and lots of really old, really big trees. Bloom Levin is a place that embodies the work of the land trust. It's 65 acres of historic agricultural and scenic landscape with lots of wildlife, and it's protected forever. This living piece of history is the Land Trust for Tennessee's Glen Levin Farm. Secured through a Revolutionary War land grant by Thomas Thompson, one of the original settlers of Nashville, the property has been handed down through generations of the Thompson family. It was originally 647 acres. It grew to be over 900 acres, and now we're down to 65. Every day we learn something new about all the structures, and we have a lot of wonderful family documents that tell us things and some great old family photographs. The young girl in this photograph is Susan West, Thomas Thompson's great-great-great-granddaughter. Susan ended up giving Glenn Levin to the Land Trust for Tennessee, a nonprofit group preserving important natural and historic places from development so they can be experienced by people today and tomorrow. Places like this are disappearing. The house here at Glen Levin dates back to 1857. Since it was built, countless people have seen it as they pass by on Franklin Pike. One of those was a young artist named Charles Brindley, who grew up hearing stories from his grandmother about how she used to come here in a horse and buggy to deliver groceries. I would always stop at the gates of Glen Levin and look up at this old house, sort of in mist, and think, how would I ever get access to a place like that to draw it and paint it or to do images? I would just pray that this would happen. God has just kind of said, this is what you asked for. You know, I've delivered it. And what are you going to do with it? So this is what I'm doing with it. What he's doing is preserving the Glen Levin of the here and now before the windows are replaced and brick walls get patched by producing a series of drawings, studies, and paintings. It's very romantic when you go into a place like this and it's not gentrified and it's not refined. It's kind of been in slumber, you might say, for many years. So we have cracked brick and peeling paint. The core of my work is built on drawing and experiencing the subject firsthand on site, what I call a quality of emotion experience. It's something that happens when you're isolated, when you're alone and you're in front of the object that you're studying. If you spend enough time alone, you have a shift of consciousness and ideas come through. So this is something that I experience and I find it very spiritual. That spiritual experience often helps Charles connect with the past. This really shows the path of daily life that has been walked by people here at Glen Levin for 150 years. You know, how many times should this be walked every day? You know, by working people on a farm. While the work begins on the farm, it ends in his Kentucky studio. This may sound silly, but I'm using 70-year-old pencils, and I use them up. I've got a little box of used pencils at home. Those used pencils represent hundreds of hours of work. And the one that I'm working on now, it has just under 11,000 brick. By the time I'm finished with it, it'll be over 400 hours. I will sort of rough it in as faithfully as I can, and then come back and actually get a tape measure and measure some of these things out. For instance, on the painting I'm working on now, every brick is 7 eighths of an inch wide and 3 eighths of an inch tall. And I proportion that out. That's the scale of my painting compared to the house. So the same number of brick are there in the painting as the house. The analysis.
analysis comes in dimensional space, interpreting depth and proportion. I may be looking at the primary subject, but then 50 yards behind it, there can be something else that I can see it just as good as what is right in front of me. So I have to push that back and pull what's important forward and create that sense of dimensional space. The interpretive aspect of his art is perhaps most noticeable with one of his favorite subjects, trees. From an ancient yellow wood, it's reported to be the largest in the United States right there at Glen Lemon. To majestic maples. As you walk around, there's just so many distinctively old and twisted maple trees that have unique shapes and unique bark patterns. Charles is transfixed and tested by trees. It's about the form and describing some limbs coming forward and some limbs going back in space. They're all dark and they're all detailed, but yet some are going back and some are coming forward. So I have to describe that dimension of space, which is very challenging. Just an average size tree drawing for me could easily be 150 or 200 hours. Hundreds of hours secures hundreds of years of history, alive in the stroke of pencil and brush, and the hard work of people with the foresight to preserve this special place. This could be a model for other historic houses and properties. There's just something about a photographic document of an old estate like this that just falls short of what these drawings and paintings can do. When people come out here in 50 years, I hope they'll say that we were very thoughtful about what we did and what we didn't do and that we did the right thing. I'm Ken Tucker on The Wild Side. You can find history everywhere you look on The Wild Side.